Hi there, we're going to take a look at a few CGRG practice questions. If you like this video, kindly click the like button and subscribe to this channel. Click pause to read the question and press continue playing when you're ready to see the answer. So the answer to that question is D, that's system configuration management. While system configuration management is a critical aspect of information system management, it does not directly relate to defining system boundaries. System boundaries are established by considering factors such as physical and logical connections, information flows, and asset ownership. These factors help determine the scope of the system in terms of its components, connections, and interactions with other systems. System configuration management, on the other hand, pertains to maintaining an understanding and control over the system states and setting which is typically considered after the system boundaries have been defined. Here's the next question. Click pause to read the question and press continue to see the answer when you're ready. So the answer is C, develop a risk management strategy. The NIST risk management framework is a set of guidelines and standards designed to help organizations manage and mitigate risk to their information and systems. The RMF process is organized into seven distinct steps. Prepare, categorize, select, implement, assess, authorize, and monitor. During the prepare step, the organization should develop its risk management strategy. This strategy will guide the organization's approach to security risk management throughout the implementation of the RMF. This preparation stage is also where the organization develops communication strategies, identifies legal and regulatory requirements, and prepares resources for risk management process. In contrast, the tasks such as categorizing the information system, step two, selecting security controls, step three, and assessing the security controls, step five, occur in subsequent steps of the RMF. Next question. Click pause to read the question and continue playing when you're ready to see the answer. So the answer is A, the organization's mission, objectives and risk tolerance. The risk management strategy develops during the prepare step of the NIST risk management framework is designed to guide the organization's approach to security risk management. This strategy should be aligned with the organization's overall mission, objectives, and risk tolerance. The risk tolerance of the organization is particularly important as it sets the level of risk the organization is willing to accept, which in turn affects the selection and implementation of security controls. An organization with a low risk tolerance might choose more stringent controls, while an organization with a high risk tolerance might be more accepting of the potential risk in favor of business functionality. The options B, the specific security controls to be implemented. Option C, the assessment of security controls. And option D, the authorization to operate the information system are activities that occur in later steps of the RMF process and are not typically part of the initial risk management strategy development. So as the next question, click pause to read the question and then continue playing when you're ready to see the answer. The answer is B, to ensure that the controls are relevant and effective for the specific system and its environment. Tailoring the baseline security controls provided by NIST SP800-53 is essential to ensure that the controls are relevant and effective for the specific system and its environment. This process takes into account the unique risk, threats and vulnerabilities associated with the system, as well as the organization's specific risk tolerance and requirements. And the last question for this video. Take your time to read the question, press pause, and when you're ready to read the answer, press continue to continue playing the video. The correct answer is option D. Consult with legal counsel before providing access to the data. 
Providing auditors with access to sensitive data is a serious matter and should only be done after careful consideration and consultation with legal counsel. It may be necessary to provide access to the data in order to complete the audit, but it is important to ensure that the appropriate safeguards are in place to protect the confidentiality of the data. Denying the auditor's request for access to the data without justification may raise concerns about the organization's transparency and willingness to cooperate with the audit. Requesting that the auditor sign a non disclosure agreement may also be appropriate, but it is not sufficient on its own to protect the confidentiality of the data.